Hi folks, we're going to talk about how galaxies were discovered and I know we have already talked about Charles Messier and Messier objects in the past, but we're going to just take a couple quick minutes because this is a really good place to begin our discussion of how galaxies were discovered. Um, as you may recall, Charles Messier was a French comet hunter um, in the late 17, early 1800s and he was hired by the king to find comets because comets at that point in history um, were foretellers of the future. And Messier kept finding things that were fuzzy but didn't move like comets moved. And this collection of things are referred to as Messier objects. Why is it Messier instead of Messier? Um, because French very often you don't say that last letter. There are about a hundred Messier objects that he found and uh, others have been added to the Messier catalog. Um, this com combination contains a lot of nebulae, uh, planetary nebulae, which are the, like the green ones here, um, star clusters, globular clusters, star clusters, things like that. But they also contained galaxies that a couple hundred years ago, all they looked, with, looked like were smudges and little fuzzy wuzzy things in space. Recall the Messier objects not in any specific order and they are a shorthand used by astronomers to talk about different things. So a hundred years ago or so um, there were thousands of these fuzzy objects that have been discovered. Um, not all of them are Messier objects, but many of them were considered Messier objects. These fuzzy wuzzy smudges that astronomers were seeing out in space, they weren't sure what they were. Um, some of them had a spirally kind of structure. You could kind of see within them they had some sort of a spirally structure. Um, and some were just fuzz. And astronomers were like, hmm, wonder what that is. 100 years ago, just about a hundred years ago, there was only one galaxy. Um, there could not have been Star Wars in a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away because the only galaxy that existed was the Milky Way, was our galaxy. And I came up with this collection of pictures to put it in perspective historically. Babe Ruth was the king of baseball. Um, people had very cool, sexy looking cars. There were movie theaters. We had Louis Armstrong was playing his trumpet. Um, there were the flappers in their beautiful dresses. This was the jazz age. And at that point in history, there was only one galaxy. In the 1920s, our old friend Harlow Shapley, and Shapley is the one who determined the locations of us um, in the Milky Way galaxy by looking at the uh, globular clusters. Um, Shapley really believed the Milky Way was the entire galaxy. Everything that existed, he thought, was in that galaxy. Um, he saw fuzzy stuff, the same kind of Messier object kind of things, but he believed that they were all within our own galaxy. He's a very, very well respected and very excellent scientist. He made one error, and that is he overestimated the size of the Milky Way. It's big, but it's not as big as Shapley hypothesized. There was another astronomer, Heber Curtis, and Curtis proposed that these fuzzy-wuzzy things the astronomers were seeing were separate, unique galaxies like our own. Um, the term was coined island universes that these were separate galaxies, but they were referred to as island universes. Curtis made an error, and his measurements of the Milky Way were too small. So Shapley, Milky Way was too big. It's Goldilocks kind of thing. Shapley thought it was too big. Curtis thought it was too small. And both of these very brilliant astronomers did not have all of the data. Um, they just, it, it, the story was young. They hadn't discovered everything yet. The gentleman who put all the pieces together is this fellow, um, Edwin Hubble. And yes, the Hubble Space Tele Telescope is named after Edwin Hubble. Um, Hubble worked at the Mount Wilson Observatory out in California. 
And this is a picture of Hubble, and this is a picture of Hubble at the telescope back in the days when you did naked eye observations a lot more than astronomers do nowadays. The reason why Hubble is such a huge deal in astronomy, and definitely this is one of those guys you've got to know if you know anything about astronomy, is Hubble is the one who figured out that there are other you, other galaxies. Um, before Hubble, it was believed there was only one, the Milky Way. And the first other galaxy he found was the Andromeda galaxy. Now, people had seen Andromeda. Here's a picture of Andromeda, and it's a very, very pretty galaxy. Um, but they did not believe it was a whole separate galaxy. Well, how did Hubble figure this out? Within the Andromeda galaxy, he found Cepheid variables. Cepheid variable stars are stars that, if you remember from Henrietta Leavitt and Leavitt's Law, um, these are stars that get, they grow over time, get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they poof out a lot of gas, and then they get small, and then over time they grow and grow and grow and poof out gas and then get small. The rate at which they change from being bright to being dim um, is directly related to um, exactly how this can be used to determine how far away they are. So without Henrietta Leavitt producing Leavitt's Law, Hubble could not have figured this out. And that's, that's how it works in science. People build upon each other's works. But he determined that the Andromeda galaxy was 2.4 million light years away. That's nutty. That is a huge, massive distance. Our galaxy is about 90,000 light years across, and this is 2.4 million, one, two, one, two, three light years away. So very, very far away. And so the Andromeda Nebula was renamed Andromeda Galaxy. 100 years or more after Hubble, what do we know? What do we know about galaxies and their distribution? And how many have we found? Well, we have found lots and lots and lots. And this is a little bit old, but it's one of the most beautiful pieces of data that I've ever seen. Um, September 2003 through January 2004, they took the Hubble Space Telescope and aimed it at one small area in the sky um, near the constellation Fornax. You've never probably, you may not have heard of Fornax because it is a southern constellation, not observable in the Northern Hemisphere. Fornax is actually south of Orion. And for 841 orbits of the Hubble Space Telescope, they pointed Hubble at a very small area of the sky. Um, the analogy is if you would hold a sewing pin at arm's length and you looked at just the head of that pin, that is the area of the sky that Hubble was aimed at for 841 orbits in a span of four or five months here. They took all of the composites from all those over 800 orbits and they created one picture, very detailed picture. And this is called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field Image. So remember, this is the size of a pin held at arm's length. In that one area of the sky, it was discovered there are over 10,000 galaxies. Okay, so if you want to take your pen right now, hold it at arm's length, and look at the point of your pen, behind that point of your pen in space, there are over 10,000 individual galaxies like our Milky Way. This image was then color enhanced for ultraviolet and infrared, and within the foreground, there are a couple pictures of plain stars. This little dot is a normal star. This little dot is a normal star. And they always say in this image that there are about three um, stars that happen to be in the Milky Way, and I can never find the third one. Um, but they have kind of a little starbursty pattern because those are foreground stars. But every other little smudge and dot out here is a whole entire galaxy. So how many galaxies does that mean there are? Nobody knows for sure. 
Um, quick answer is lots, <laughs> lots and lots. It's estimated that there are 100 to 500 billion galaxies out there, each galaxy containing approximately 100 billion stars. So that's like 10 million billion stars or 10,000 trillion stars or 10 quadrillion stars. Um, it is estimated that there are a, at least 17 billion Earth-sized worlds in our Milky Way galaxy alone. So the odds that there is life out there is pretty good. The odds there is a, another Earth out there is pretty good. But it's a long way away and hard to find. All right, that's going to um, end this one. We're going to come back and talk about types of galaxies because they are not all the same.